Now, today we are going to discuss infective endocarditis, one of the very dangerous condition and uh, with a very high mortality rate in spite of so much advances in micro, uh, in uh, so much advances in uh, antibiotics, right? Still, many people die with this condition. And how do we define an infective endocarditis? Infective endocarditis is a condition in which patient's endocardium is colonized by microbiological agents. Patient's endocardium is colonized by microbiological agents, right? And microbes are actively multiplying within the endocardium. Is that right? And damaging the endocardium. Now, infective endocarditis, uh, while we are discussing infective endocarditis, let's talk about some other type of endocarditis as well, that there are at least five type of endocarditis you are supposed to know. Of course, one is infective endocarditis. Then another type of endocarditis is rheumatic endocarditis. It develops during rheumatic fever. Rheumatic endocarditis. Now look. How the infective endocarditis and rheumatic endocarditis are different that in rheumatic endocarditis, this is a streptococcal infection initially in the throat, which triggers an immune response, which cross react against the patient's connective tissue, including the connective tissue of the valves of the patient, right? So what we can say in rheumatic endocarditis, there is I mean, immune mediated attack on the endocardium. But in case of infective endocarditis, there is, uh, you can say, bacteria or microbe directly present within the myocardium and multiplying and damaging the. So we can say this is microbiological inflammation and this is immune mediated inflammation. Then there is one more type of endocarditis which is related with the carcinoid syndrome, which is related with the carcinoid syndrome. In carcinoid syndrome, 5-hydroxytryptamine, which is also called serotonin, right? 5-hydroxytryptamine or serotonin is produced in massive amount and its metabolites uh, injures the endocardium and especially right side of the heart, uh, endocardial, you can thickening starts. So we'll discuss this in detail later. Then there's another endocarditis which is related with hypercoagulable state. That when person's blood is hypercoagulable, it has a high tendency to coagulate. Uh, in such patient, uh, sometimes on the valvular surface, the formation of thrombi, right? And we call that condition marantic endocarditis. Marantic endocarditis. Marantic endocarditis, right? Then there is one more type of endocarditis. Will you tell me? There is one more type of endocarditis that is SLE related endocarditis that is systemic leopus erythematosus that is SLE related, related endocarditis which is also called SLE related endocarditis is also called Lipman sac. Lebman sac endocarditis. Now listen, we'll discuss all of these. Right now we'll concentrate on the infective endocarditis, right? We'll discuss into detail the causes of infective endocarditis, complications related with infective endocarditis, right? And by the end of the lecture, then I will help you to understand that how you can differentiate infective endocarditis from rheumatic endocarditis, what is carcinoid endocarditis, how to differentiate it from others, uh, how to differentiate the vegetations of Lipman sac endocarditis from rheumatic endocarditis, right? We'll discuss all these things, they how they are different from each other and why they have different clinical pathological significance. Now let's go into detail of infective endocarditis. Now, infective endocarditis can have two factors, two types of basically infective endocarditis are said to be present over there. According to the tempo of the disease, according to the clinical presentation and tempo of the disease, infective endocarditis is primarily divided into 
two types of endocarditis. One is called acute infective endocarditis and other is called, yes please, subacute, subacute infective endocarditis, right. Now the art of understanding is you must be able to differentiate these two cases, but you should remember that this clinical presentation is different, that clinical presentation is different, right, and they are both conditions are managed in slightly different way. Acute infective endocarditis is usually produced by the organisms which are very, very virulent, right? The organisms which produce acute infective endocarditis, they are highly virulent organisms, highly virulent organisms, right? For example, for example, we can talk about Staphylococcus aureus, Staph aureus, right? Highly virulent organisms, very, very pathogenic organisms. Opposite to that, subacute infective to infective endocarditis is usually produced organism with low virulence, right? Organism with organism with low virulence, right? The organism which produce less toxic substances, organism which which are less destructive, but acute infective endocarditis is produced by the organism which are highly aggressive organisms and highly destructive organisms. Now, when we talk about subacute infective endocarditis, the, one of the most common cause of this type of uh, infective endocarditis is streptococcus viridans, strep viridans, which is released from the oral cavity. Strep viridans, which are normally living in the oral cavity, and whenever you are doing some dental procedure, from the oral cavity, these bacteria jump into blood and they produce transient bacteremia. They produce transient bacteremia. Again, you have to remember that bacteremia is a condition which is different than septicemia. Bacteremia is just mere presence of bacteria in your circulation and usually bacteremia is transient. For example, you are brushing your teeth, you injure some uh, microcirculation, some bacteria go into your blood. But these bacteria will be very rapidly destroyed by your defenses present in circulation. So few bacteria from your mouth entered into circulation for a short duration, right? And the, those were eliminated by your body defenses. This type of transient presence of bacteria in your circulatory system is called bacteremia. Please don't confuse bacteremia with septicemia. Septicemia is a condition when bacteria enter into your blood and they defeat your defenses and bacteria are multiplying actively in your blood. Is that right? So, septicemia is something less common, but bacteremia occurs even in healthy people very commonly, right? Uh, during, you can say, dental procedures, bacteremia occur. Sometimes from, from mucosal cracks in GIT, bacteremia occurs. For sometimes small injury on the hand, right? And you get bacteri bacteremia there. So, bacteremia is something common. Bacteremia is something common. But again, we have to remember one thing that bacteremia is usually not dangerous. Why? Because in bacteremia, most of the time, organisms which are going into our blood, they are from commensals in our body, and usually they have low pathogenicity, number one. Number two, in bacteremia, uh, our blood system is really aggressive, and it dominates over the virulence of the organism, which, because organism has low virulence, and usually, uh, you can say, circulatory defenses, and uh, clear the bacteria. Number three, you must remember that when everyone passes through bacteremia often, but our endothelium of the blood vessels, endothelium of our circulatory system is relatively resistant to the thrombus formation and relatively resistant to the colonization by microbes. It's worth repeating that endothelium of our circulatory system, including the endocardium of the heart, is relatively resistant to the thrombus formation. Is that right? And all the endothelium, including the endocardium of the heart, is also relatively resistant to the colonization by the microbes. Is that right? 
But what really happens that when bacteremia occurs again and again and a person with normal heart, he may not suffer with big problem. But if someone has heart which is predisposed to disease, predisposed to infective endocarditis, then even the organism with the low virulence can produce a disease. And now here we are going to another concept. Let me elaborate it. Look, usually acute infective endocarditis occurs on healthy myocardium or endocardium, right? It is usually in the healthy heart. We can say that acute infect, infective endocarditis is usually on the healthy heart, right? And healthy endocardium. But opposite to that, the subacute infective endocarditis usually occurs. Subacute infective endocarditis usually occurs to the people who are having some predisposing condition in the heart. They have the people who have some pathological condition in the heart. So they are having some predisposing, predisposing. Pathological condition in heart. Pathological condition. Why? Because in subacute infective endocarditis, the organisms are usually of low virulence. And low virulence organism cannot attack a healthy heart. Right? So low virulence organism will usually attack the heart which is already predisposed for the infective endocarditis. I will explain why. Right? But in Organism of acute infective endocarditis are highly virulent, so they can involve and damage even the healthy heart. Now, what are the predisposing conditions? Right? Actually, all those conditions which produce abnormal blood flow and abnormal jet lanes in the heart. Let me tell you one very simple condition to explain. Let's suppose that a person has a very small ventricular septal defect. Person has a very small ventricular septal defect. Now, what really happens, you know that left ventricle is thicker and high pressure chamber and right ventricle is thin and it is low pressure chamber. Now, what really happens, that blood from the left side will be moving towards the right. Now, the this is high velocity jet from the left side will shunt to the right side and it will produce injury here, right? It will damage the endocardium here. And we say that this jet effect will produce injury on the endocardium. And once endocardium is injured, right? Once endocardium is injured, it loses its anticoagulant activity and it becomes procoagulant. It can stick the platelets more effectively, right? So what really happens, let me explain that let's suppose this was the jet effect of the lien. And endocardium, which was present over here, it is injured. Now when this endocardium is injured here, what will happen? That to the injured endocardium, platelets will start sticking. When platelets will start sticking, on the platelets, coagulation process will start and some fibrin will be deposited. And on this fibrin, more platelets will stick more platelets will stick and more fibrin will be deposited. So what really happens that when there is abnormal flow in the heart, whenever there is abnormal blood flow in the heart, there are jet lions produced here, right? And whenever there are jet lions, right, high velocity jet of blood damage the, impinge on certain part of the endocardium and injure that part of the endocardium. When they injured that part of the endocardium, that endocardium is no more healthy endocardium. So it becomes injured endocardium and injured endocardium love to bind the platelets and those platelets will be activated and they will active, uh, bind more platelets as well as they will activate the coagulation process which will convert fibrinogen into fibrin. In the end, this area, you see, where there were jet lion, it will form a small micro, micro thrombi small micro thrombi. So micro thrombi formed in multiple areas of the heart when heart has abnormal blood flow. Now these micro thrombi are a very welcoming place for bacteria. 
Now you imagine if some person has abnormal blood flow in the heart, the abnormal jets, there is too much injury to some part of the endocardium and when that endocardium is injured, that become more procoagulant and throm microthrombi start forming there. Microthrombi help the bacteria to settle because as I told you, everyone develops bacteremia. But in a normal person, when bacteria are passing through the heart, they are eliminated or within the circulation they are eliminated. And even if bacteria reach to the heart in a normal person, bacteria with low virulence, the, those bacteria cannot bind to endocardium. But when endocardium is having such microthrombi, bacteria will stick on them. What will happen? Bacteria will stick on them. And then bacteria will go into deeper area. And when bacteria will go into deeper area, they will start multiplying and make micro colonies. Bacteria will make micro colonies. In these deeper layers, bacteria are well protected from the complement system. Bacteria are well protected from the antibodies. Bacteria are well protected from the inflammatory action. So you can say that these microthrombi act as a hiding place for the bacteria. They act as a settling place. They let the low virulence organism to settle into heart and multiply. But if heart is absolutely healthy, such bacteria cannot settle into heart and they cannot produce infection in the endocardium. This is one thing. Second thing is that when there is, let me make it more elaborate diagram to explain it. So let's suppose this is your heart and this is ventricular septal defect, right? Now jet lions are injuring this area, right? This already we have learned that endocardium is injured, right? With injured endocardium, this is healthy endocardium. This was injured endocardium. I told you platelets will stick and on that, uh, what will form? Fibrin will form. Then I told you this microthrombi will act as a binding site for the microbes, right? Even microbe with low virulence can bind with these thrombi, microthrombi. Then these microbes will go inside this and there they will start multiplying and make micro colonies. So we can say that whenever heart has such jet lions, heart will develop the microthrombi, heart will become more predisposed to the infective endocarditis even by the low virulence organisms. Am I clear? This is one situation. Number two situation which I, I want to highlight is that when high velocity jets are moving like this, on the flanks of the high, uh, you can say velocity jets, what really happens, low pressure pools form and blood starts circulating like this, low pressure whirlpools form on the side of this. Let me explain. When uh, in, a, in any tunnel, if one layer of the water is moving fast, then other layers which are slow moving, they make whirlpools. In the same way, when high velocity jets are impinging, right, they are injuring not only this area, rather on the side, they are making the low pressure sink. In low pressure sink, blood keep on revolving like this. And this blood which is revolving here, if it has some bacteria due to bacteremia, then those bacteria will have a pro prolonged chance to remain in contact with the local endothelium. And even then bacteria will settle here and start damaging on this area. So what did we learn? We learned two facts. Number one, that jet lions can produce uh, wherever they impinge, they make more chances for bacteria to settle there. Secondly, when there are jet lions, on the flanks of that, there are low pressure sinks and they wear blood keep on whirlpooling and bacteria, if they are present in this blood, they have more chance that repeatedly they will come in touch with endocardium and eventually they get a chance to settle there. Is that right? Third thing is that not only abnormal blood flow like jet lions or like uh, you can say whirlpooling and low pressure sinks, even these, this modern era when we are doing lot of catheterizations to the human heart, even sometimes if there is indwelling catheter or some catheter tip induced injury is there, again injured endothel endothelium or endocardium will become more predisposed to harbor the low virulent organisms. Is that right?